Welcome to Fond with Julian Engineering. During the age of dinosaurs, the earth was full of life. As living beings die, over time large amounts of dead organic materials accumulate in parts of the world, for example in deep oceans. If we are lucky, the organic materials were covered with sediments and tectonic movements move this material to depths of 3 to 5 kilometers below the surface. Under the influence of high temperatures at this depth, the organic matter is very slowly transformed into hydrocarbons. Geologists call this rock in which organic matter is transformed into hydrocarbons a source rock. Here I have a sample of a source rock. We know already that many sediments accumulate above this source rock and these sediments apply high pressure to it. The high pressure leads to part of the hydrocarbons being squeezed out from this source rock like from a sponge. In the microscopic pores in the sediment rock, the hydrocarbons mix with formation water and since hydrocarbons are lighter than water, they start to rise in the pore space of the sediment rock. Some of the hydrocarbons finally escape to the surface of the earth and evaporate into the atmosphere. However, sometimes along their way, the hydrocarbons eat an impermeable layer or barrier, for example, a tight shield layer, just like the one in the screen, a dark gray color. Since the hydrocarbons cannot pass this layer, they move along in an upward direction until they cannot rise any further. After millions of years, the accumulation is what we call a conventional reservoir. We have produced from such oil and gas reservoirs for over 150 years now, and we are realizing that such conventional reservoirs are slowly coming to an end. But our modern civilization is still dependent on hydrocarbons. That's why we have begun to produce from so-called unconventional deposits. Here in this picture, we have two of such unconventional reservoirs. The first unconventional reservoir is the source rock itself. We have learned that only a part of the hydrocarbons in place were squeezed out of the source rock. The rest is still sitting in the rock. It is trapped in the microscopic pores. Since these pores are not connected with each other, the hydrocarbons are stuck and cannot move. So the source rock contains trapped hydrocarbon. The second deposit we can find here is called tight gas. Since sometimes the pores of the sediment rocks are so small and tight that we cannot see them, of course the oil has no chance to move. But the gas is much more flexible and attempts to move to the surface. But if the flow paths get narrower, the gas finally gets stuck and that's what we call the tight gas. Here in Germany, we have many tight gas reservoirs and also source rocks containing oil. But the production of sort of the carbon is challenging because they are stuck in the rock. We have a technology we could be used to create flow paths for the oil and gas we produce. This is called hydraulic fracturing. In short, we call it fracking. In order to fracture the reservoir, a very high pressure is applied to the borehole so that the strength of the rock is exceeded and cracks are initiated. These artificial cracks in the rock connect the pores of the formation so the oil and gas which was trapped can now flow to the borehole and be produced. There are significant unconventional reservoirs in Germany, but fracking is not accepted by the people. So let's see how this works. Maybe we will find new technologies to further reduce environmental footprints and the unconventional reservoirs can be allowed to be produced by the population. Maybe, if you really want to know how this could be done, well, feel free to visit our lecture, Production Engineering, from my colleague, Professor Amro. We'll be happy to see you here in Freiburg. Glugoff.